Hello everyone and welcome to another really awesome game uh, from day 3 of the FTX Crypto Cup. The preliminaries is Hikaru Nakamura versus uh, Alireza Firuja and we said that we were going to cover one more game before we check out the standings and who qualified for the actual event uh, because out of the 16 people that start in the preliminaries only 8 uh, go uh, to, to play the main event uh, so this is a really nice one and uh, there were a lot of games to choose from i decided to show this one uh, since it's uh, well th there is a reason to it uh, so let let's just check it out uh, so hikaru with the white pieces opens with d4 uh, we have knight to f6 c4 and now c5 going for the benoni defense this is only one of the reasons i decided to show this game uh, we have d5 and now b5 going for the Benko Gambit. That's another reason I decided to show this game. Uh, we have c captures on b5 and now a6 happily uh, giving up uh, more pawns. This is how this is played. Uh, b captures on a6 and now g6 preparing to fianchetto the dark square bishop. Uh, we have knight to c3 and now bishop to g7. We have g3 and here just castle. So this has all been played before. Nothing uh, out of the ordinary here. Knight to f3 and now queen to a5. Uh, usually, uh, well, most of the times the black will just capture this pawn, but this is a very interesting line. Queen to a5. Uh, now you will have some threats against this knight. Uh, for example, you can just... Uh, uh, capture here uh, and then if queen captures you can capture with the bishop and then if pawn captures then the queen can capture then you can capture this rook so there are some very nasty threats here in the position so here just bishop to d2 by hikaru and now d6 we have bishop to g2 and now the position has been reached before but every time uh, this position has been reached uh, the pawn was captured either by the knight or by the bishop but here we have knight b to d7 and it is now uh, as of move 10 we have a completely new game so let's see how hikaru deals with this so delaying uh, the recapture of the a6 pawn uh, we have castles uh, and now knight to b6 so there's additional pressure on the d5 pawn now we have queen to c2 now asking uh, what do you want to play here uh, the thing is if you try and capture this pawn now uh, with something like captures then we just capture it and you can't recapture because the queen is hanging so that's uh, out of the question uh, so instead we have just queen captures on a6 uh, you want to capture the pawn uh, either way but this way at least you get uh, away from the bishop on, on d2 uh, here we have e4 now cementing this pawn on d5 and now knight to c4 putting pressure on this bishop here uh, we have b3 uh, chasing the, the knight away uh, and now comes uh, knight captures on d2 we have knight captures on d2 and now knight to g4 so here uh, a lot of pressure and you have to be very careful uh you could try a lot of things, but uh, you know that this bishop, for example, could come to d4 and it's going to be very, very interesting. One thing you could do is something like h3, knight e5, and then f4, but it's uh, very ugly. You have to calculate what happens after queen to d3. Now you offer a queen trade, and this is all perfectly fine for black. So here, uh, instead, Hikaru went with a4 right away, uh, but this is, uh, well, this just blunders the pawn, and Alireza uh, spots it uh, right away. He plays queen to a5. Now there's a double attack on the knight here and you have to defend it we have rook a to c1 makes sense as you want to uh well get the rook away from a1 and you also don't want to move this rook and allow something like bishop to d4 so here we have bishop to a6 exactly what alireza is trying to achieve now if hikaru moves the rook then uh let's say rook f to d1 bishop to d4 and that's game over there is no defending this position so instead, uh, after bishop to a6, we have knight to b5, now blocking this bishop so you don't have to move the rook. And also, if you bring the bishop in, uh, doesn't really doesn't really matter because the rook is on f1. So here, bishop captures, pawn captures, and queen captures. And by uh, by just, you know, playing normal moves, Alireza has won a pawn uh, as that uh, a4 push by Hikaru was a bit premature. Better was to just kick away the knight and go into that final line that we've shown. So here we have h3, knight to e5, and now only now rook f to d1. Uh, we have rook to a3, now piling up on this pawn, uh, and now bishop to f1. Attacking Alireza's queen, queen to b4, and now queen to c3. Uh, offering a queen trade, but Alireza not interested. He just brings the queen back, queen to b7. And now queen to e3. Uh, we have rook to a2. Now, you could bring the other rook over to the a-file. That's also perfectly fine. But uh, rook to a8 is what Alireza chooses. Uh, he wants to infiltrate the position even further. Uh, we have bishop to e2. Uh, now at some point black uh, white probably will play something like king to g2 and f4. But it's a very unpleasant because the rook is controlling the entire second rank. So here we have rook to b8 by Firuja. 
uh, and now comes king to f1. King to f1 is a very nice prophylactic move uh, because, uh, well, if you try something like rook to a1 to simply chase away this rook, uh, black can just capture, capture, and then play a knight to f3 check, and the bishop picks up the rook. So you don't want um, uh, you don't want your king uh, in uh, reach of this knight. So you want to play king to f1, and now you don't really care about any discoveries from the knight or the bishop. So here, knight to d7. Now the bishop also controls the, the a1 square, and now knight to f3. And here uh, we have queen to... Uh, b4. You could also capture the pawn, but that's uh, a little trick uh, uh, Hikaru uh, plays for Alireza, because if you do this, then bishop to c4, uh, and this just wins material. You're going to have to play a, knight, uh, a rook captures an f3, bishop captures here, and you're going to win the exchange. Uh, Black's position is still very much okay, but uh, there's no reason to do this. So instead, we have queen to b4 by Alireza, uh, and now comes bishop to c4. So just nicely cementing everything. Yes, this bishop is now a pawn, uh, but you want to stop uh, any advancement from black. So here, rook to b8, rook bt a8 now, uh, as uh, there is really no breaking through the b file, and now queen to d3. Uh, we have rook to b2, now preparing to bring the other rook over to a2, and of course uh, Hikaru prepares for this. He plays rook to c2, we have rook to a2, and now he trades a pair of rooks. We have captures, captures, and now rook to e1. So what do you what do you play here? Uh, rook back to uh, rook back to a2, and it's very hard for Hikaru to find an active move here. He plays bishop to b5, goes after the knight, uh, but uh, Alireza wants to move this knight uh, either way. So here knight to e5, attacking this knight, which defends the d2 square. So you can bring the rook over to d2 if the knight moves. Uh, but first knight captures an e5, bishop captures, and now. As you know that this is coming, we have to block this. So rook to e2, but now uh, the a1 square uh, is available. So rook to a1 check, king to g2, and now queen to a3 check uh, with plans of queen c1 followed by queen to h1 checkmate as the king will have nowhere to go. So queen to c2, not allowing this, and now rook to c1. Further harassing white's queen, uh, we have queen to a2, and Alireza again uh, de declines the queen trade. Bishop back to c4, now queen, now queen to c C3. Uh, so what do you play here? Uh, you have to be, again, very careful. There are no good moves here for white. If you try and attack the black queen, just queen day one. And again, you start harassing the, the white king. So instead, after queen to c3, we have rook to e3, uh, not allowing Alireza even a move. So queen back to d4, and now bishop to f1. Uh, so what do you play here? King to g7. A very nice uh, idea by, by Firuja. He wants to start advancing his h pawn and he doesn't want to allow uh, any, any checks along the back rank. So uh, Hikaru without a useful move here. He plays queen to e2, but now he vacates the a, a1 square for the black queen. So queen to a1 and again. Uh, what do you play here? We have queen to a6, now offering a queen trade, uh, but of course Alireza again declines. Queen to b2, we have queen to e2, again offering a queen trade, and now rook to c2. Uh, queen to f3, and now a queen to a1. Now with the threat of uh, just rook to c1, so what can Hikaru do here? Uh, he plays bishop to d3. He attacks the rook, we have rook to c1, and now comes rook to e2. Uh, the thing is, if you start with rook to g1 check and king here, you, don't, you no longer have a rook to h1 uh, check because the queen and the king uh, covered that square now. So instead, after rook e2, we have rook to h1, now with idea of queen to f1 or queen to g1 check, made. Hikaru plays queen to e3 and now queen to f1 with check. We have king to f3 and now queen captures on h3. And now it uh, doesn't really matter what Hikaru does here. Uh, there really aren't no good moves uh, at all. So uh, <laughs> queen to g5 was played. Uh, not... Uh, not a lot to play here, uh, but now comes uh, a really very nice idea, rook to d1. So what can you do here? Uh, we have rook to e3, and uh, here as the bishop is under attack, you have to play something. Hikaru defended it with rook to e3, but at the same moment when he played rook to e3, he also resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, problem is uh, Alireza uh, can pretty much play anything here, but it's actually a forced checkmate in four, so even feel free to pause the video and try to find this mating idea while I give you a couple of seconds. 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on spotting this checkmate in four. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen to h1 with check. And now it doesn't matter where you go, because if you play something like uh, king to g4, then this h5 check comes and that's it. You have to give up the queen uh, and now, okay, not with the pawn, but you can immediately capture with the queen and that's mate in one. Uh, the white king has no squares. Uh, and if instead you go to e2, uh, it's not much better because now there is this very, very uh, incredible bishop to c3. And now uh, everything is a checkmate. This is a checkmate. The, the, the black queen covers all of these squares. The bishop covers this. So any check will be uh, just checkmate if you try and, you know, block something to maybe give a square to the king. Then rook to e1 is checkmate. So there really uh, is no escaping this. Kikaru knew this. So after he played rook to e3, uh, it was... Uh, uh, right away in this position on move 51 that he resigned the game like I said as there is nothing more to be done here also one of the reasons why I chose this game uh, you know just uh, uh, su such a such a rich position with so many pieces around the white king that is uh, on f3 uh, a very nice final position uh, so yeah uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, uh, these are the standings uh, after the three days of the preliminaries. Uh, so people who have qualified are uh, Fabiano, Anish, Hikaru, Maxim, uh, Wesley So, Magnus Carlsen, uh, Temur Rajabov, and Yanni Polnishu. So those eight have qualified for the main event. And uh, those who did not qualify is Levon Arnan, which is a shame. Uh, exact same amount of points as Yanni Pomnishi, but uh, Nepo with the better additional criteria. Mamidiaro with seven and a half. Uh, Firujan, Svidler, uh, and the Ding with seven. Uh, Daniel Dubo with six. Alexander Grishuk, not definitely not his tournament, with five. And Alan Pichot. Uh, with uh, one and a half points so uh, there were there are of course a lot of names here that we would like to see on the left but that would also mean that some of the names from the left would be on the right so you know uh, th that's why it's uh, it's a nice event not everyone can qualify so it it means a lot to fight uh, and also uh, these are the pairings uh, for the first day of the knockouts uh, so Fabi will face uh, uh, Nepo, Wesley So will face Maxim Vashel Agrav, Hikaru will face Magnus and uh, Rajabov will face Anish Giri so it's going to be a uh, really uh, awesome uh, and we're going to enjoy a lot of it so May 26th, 27th will be the quarterfinals then 28th, 29th will be the semifinals and then 30 and 31 will be the final so no no rest for, for the wicked it, it, it would seem uh, but yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it uh, I would like to thank Pratamesh Mahajan uh, Caleb Ewing, uh, Mihal Volske uh, Ruben uh, Teverik uh, and Trevor Scott for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot, I really appreciate it uh, as usual you can check two of my previous videos here, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the main event checking up your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world uh, thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day